It's the week seven waiver wire. This is the week that you have to call your shots. There's a lot of murkiness going on. We have a lot of injuries to running backs. We have the Christian McCaffrey's. We have the Kyron Williams, which means there's a lot of backup action available for you. But I have two names that will probably top the list of my favorite waiver wire guys, and they have nothing to do with the players that I have already mentioned. If you want my full waiver wire rankings, they are available on bdge.co for big dog members. You get our waiver wire rankings with our fab suggestions, whether or not we use the number one waiver wire priority on any of these guys, plus our weekly rankings, which will be live by the time that you watch this updated all the way until kickoff. We have our Q and Assault live stream every Saturday where only y'all big dog members can come in there and ask me to yap about any questions you may have every single Saturday until the end of the season. BDGE.co. Go become a big dog member. Let's talk waiver wire. But we got to tuck our shirts in, of course. Y'all know what we do here every week. We hop into the trending tab on Sleeper, so we make sure that we talk about all the trending players. We'll go through the list over here as well as the trending down to let you know who we think there are players that y'all could drop from your roster. So we've got this giant patch of running backs here. We've got Jordan Mason, Zach Evans, Craig Reynolds, Kareem Hunt, all the way down to like Elijah Mitchell. And I think those are probably the most talked about dudes on the waiver wire this week because of the injury. So we'll start with C-Mac, right? C-Mac is dealing with like an oblique strain. So is Debo Samuel on the same team. So a lot of targets, a lot of touches open up in that offense. Now, we have not yet heard, and I am filming this. I tried to wait till like the last possible minute to get as much injury news as possible. Filming this around noon, Tuesday, October 17th. Uh, up, up to right now, they were getting an MRI for C-Mac yesterday, last night, but we have not heard word of the severity of it. These are usually somewhere from zero to two week injury timetables they do have it by in week nine so if they want to play it really safe it's possible that they let him sit out for the next two weeks they have the bye week and then he's fully healthy coming back after that bye week if he misses time we're probably looking at a split backfield between jordan mason and elijah mitchell now this is a tricky situation because when c-mac went out last week jordan mason ended up playing the majority of the snaps here as you can see he was a 24 percent snap guy compared to Elijah Mitchell's 11%. So in terms of like one for one, tit for tat, that guy versus that guy, Mason played above him. But I do want to echo that Elijah Mitchell is coming off a multi-week absence. And most times when players are coming off of multi-week absences, their play time, their production, everything is down, right? And they get more acclimated to the offense. I think it's worth noting that this team has shown affinity for both of these players. I think they like both Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell. I think Elijah Mitchell has done some fantastic shit for the San Francisco offense in his short tenure in the 49ers so despite Jordan Mason having 24 percent of the snaps and outplaying Elijah Mitchell a little bit got more carries saw some targets I am not ready to say like okay Jordan Mason is the guy over Elijah Mitchell this is probably going to be a backfield split against Minnesota they play on Monday night so maybe that extra day of rest helps C-Mac I don't, I don't really know if I had to guess right now I'd probably lean towards C-Mac missing this game which would open up obviously that fantasy spot in the 49ers backfield is so 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 valuable and if Debo misses time then those short targets probably end up going to the running back as well so the way I'm looking at this backfield I really don't want to overspend I would probably drop about equal fab on both of these guys and hope I end up with one of them again the fab suggestions will be in our rankings on bdge.co right now I a lot of these guys this week are are very like fluky. They're very fill in, and I know this is a huge bye week. There are six teams on bye this upcoming week. There are the Panthers, the Bengals, the Cowboys, the Texans, the Jets, and the Titans. So we've got a ton of bye week action going on. So you you very likely need to fill one spot. But I do caution to think more long term with your fab spend if you have dollars left than trying to fill in a flex spot you know, for one week, hoping that you pick the right guy in a committee. So I don't want to overspend on Mason or Elijah Mitchell. But if there's a multi-week absence, obviously they can help you for multiple weeks. With both of these guys, I'd probably be in the 5 to 8% range just because we are not sure of what actually happens in this backfield. I think they both probably get work. I think they both probably get 12 to 14 touches in this upcoming game. But who knows? Like maybe they just ride the hot hand and Elijah Mitchell gets hot. Or maybe Jordan Mason's uh, playtime last week was not fluky, and he is the guy that they prefer right now. But they've shown us in the past that they do like Mitchell a lot. So I'm kind of like back and forth on it. Therefore, I'm not overspending because I don't know if I feel comfortable with either of these guys necessarily in my lineup. You put a gun to my head, I had to choose. I'd probably go Mason over Elijah Mitchell 
for this upcoming week. Brings us to the next running back who will probably get a lot of play time in this upcoming week, Mr. Zach Evans, who was a favorite of Noah, who did videos on our channel for a while covering rookie running backs and whatnot. He loves Zach Evans. While everybody else was shitting on Zach Evans, he liked him a ton. So did a couple guys in the draft community, like uh, I think it was Dane Brugler. There's a couple dudes who had him as like a top 50 player, which was really, really surprising. Regardless, Kyron Williams dealing with an ankle injury, which will probably hold him out for a week. You have Ronnie Rivers, who's going to be out for at least a month at this point. And it's really given the backfield to Zach Evans, who plays Pittsburgh this week. However, this is another one I would caution. I do think he'll start. I do think he'll get the majority of touches. This backfield, they're not getting any targets now that Cooper Cup is back, right? They're only throwing the ball to Cooper Cup and Puka. They're like a 70% target rate uh, duo at this point. When McVay was asked about the backfield, he went out of his way to bring up the fact that Royce Freeman is on the practice squad and that he will be called up and they probably will use him. So... I don't know if I feel confident that Zach Evans is going to be like a, a big workload dude. I feel like this has happened so many times under McVay where, you know, the starter's injured or they don't trust the starter. So they just start using random fucking running backs. I feel like Royce Freeman's actually, this has already happened with Royce Freeman before, like last year and the year before that. So I think Zach Evans is a cool player. I think this is a cool little story, but another dude I'm not willing to overspend on right now because he's going to be a one week fill-in. And while I obviously prefer him to Royce Freeman, I don't want to spend any money on Royce Freeman. It wouldn't surprise me if Royce Freeman ends up getting like eight to 10 touches just fucking because, but then they throw the ball, you know, 45 times because also just because Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are there. And when you're comparing those two to Zach Evans, probably not going to get a ton on the ground. So Zach Evans is a dude that, again, don't want to overspend. You need a bye week fill in somewhere in the 5%, 5 to 7% range. Craig Reynolds might be even be worse off he's like the early down guy for Detroit right now Dave Montgomery is going to miss a couple of weeks most likely with the rib injury Jameer Gibbs is probably going to be back this week if Jameer Gibbs is not back this week but again we probably won't have word on that before the waiver wire Craig Reynolds is definitely not a dude I'm overspending on he's more in like the three percent range because Montgomery could be back next week Gibbs could be the guy like we saw Montgomery miss a game earlier this year and Gibbs saw like 20 touches. Gibbs is going to be the guy if Montgomery misses time and Gibbs is back. Now, Gibbs is coming back from a multi-week hamstring injury, which means maybe they split the time a little bit more, but they're playing on the road at Baltimore. That's a tough run defense. Uh, Craig Reynolds is not a guy that I'm splurging on and not a guy that I feel comfortable, even with six teams on a fucking bye, to, uh, to go grab. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. The running back that I actually like the most this week that I feel could have the most long-term impact on your fantasy team is Kareem Hunt. He looked very good. He split carries almost directly with Jerome Ford. He had a 25% target per route run rate last week. Over 16 fantasy points in full PPR. Got some goal line work. Got the targets. This was a close game, too, so it wasn't like a garbage time or anything like that. And he's getting more and more acclimated to the offense you've got Indy you've got Seattle you've got Arizona in the playoffs you're looking at Denver LA Jacksonville Chicago Houston like those are some matchups that you could take advantage of and I think Kareem Hunt has the most staying power out of all the running backs on the wire this week I think they like Jerome Ford as a one but there's no doubt about it that as Kareem Hunt gets more and more into NFL shape like he's obviously comfortable with his offense already he played there for many many years and they're obviously comfortable giving him the ball so I'm not surprised. I won't be surprised if they start to move more into like a 1A, 1B situation where Kareem Hunt takes more of the pass catching work and they split, you know, carries on the goal line between him and Jerome Ford. So realistically, Kareem, Kareem Hunt is probably, uh, unless you need like a bye week fill in right now, you're super desperate. You know, you're like two and four and you have no other options. Some shit. Kareem Hunt is probably my number one running back pickup of the week. And I would spend upwards of like 10% fab on him. And I, I wouldn't put him above some of the wide receivers that we're going to talk about in a second. So he's not my number one overall waiver wire pickup of the week, but I, he is creeping into that category for the running back in a very, very murky week. I think those are probably the top running backs to talk about. Are there any other ones on the list that are trending right now? Nah, not really. Keontae Ingram, that entire Arizona backfield is a fucking mess. They're splitting it between Amari DeMarcado, Keontae Ingram. Uh, Damian Williams, like you can't trust anybody back there. Salvin Ahmed, I guess, is a little bit interesting with Devon Achan on the IR and Chris Brooks just got injured as well. He's like kind of the backup, I guess. And listen, the backup in Miami does get a lot of scraps. They do get a lot of garbage time. So I guess you could do worse than Salvin Ahmed. He's probably someone that should be rostered for the next couple weeks in good matchups. They play Philly, so I don't expect them to run it out the door. But they play New England after that. KC should be a high scoring game by Las Vegas. So there might be some some double digit games for Salvin Ahmed. 
don't want to rely on it, but you could do worse than picking him up for, you know, zero to two percent. Yeah, no other running backs really worth mentioning here. So we'll move over to the wide receivers. And my favorite wide receiver on this list is down here at number five. And luckily the only available player on our waiver wire this week. Rashi Rice, man. Rashi Rice, I know he's pretty highly owned. We've been telling you to pick him up for like four straight weeks now. And now we're starting to see these snaps increase. We're starting to see him become a more uh, well-rounded player. He is becoming like the target in that offense outside of Travis Kelsey. Borderline the only dependable wide receiver out of that entire group uh, because Justin Watson is now hurt, which is like, doesn't matter because Justin Watson doesn't, I shouldn't say doesn't matter, but like for Justin Watson, he was only putting up 20, 30 uh, yards a game if that. Like with those guys out though, it becomes more condensed and you kind of have no choice but to play Rashi Rice more, speaking from an Andy Reid mindset. So I think Rashi Rice is another dude that you're, investing in for long term right you're investing in now with the fab so that you know weeks 10 through 16 he's a 75 to 80 percent snap player and he's looked good in the offense so i think he is probably my number one waiver wire pickup of the week if he is available on your shit and i would throw anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of my fab on him i would use the number one overall waiver wire pick on him he is like that second half of the year rookie wide receiver by post by type b the rest of the guys on this list, JSN is definitely super owned, 65%. Josh Downs is at like the 50% mark. He's another guy who's getting a ton of targets. Minshew's, you know, lighting up uh, Josh Downs, six targets, six catches, eight targets uh, last week. And he's had some other big games where he's gotten 12 targets. So he's, he's a very clear staple of this offense right now. So he's another guy that looks good in PPR leagues. Same thing with Wondell Robinson, man. Eight catches, eight targets last week, uh, 62 yards. This is the type of player he is. He's just a PPR guy. So if you're in a full PPR league, He's actually like a sneaky, really, really, really solid pickup. In my opinion, 29% owned right now. Him, Jalen Hyatt, and Darius Slayton are pretty much running all the routes at this point. Daniel Jones will be back soon. But Wandell and Jalen Hyatt, I expect them to continue to make more and more of an impact on this offense that desperately needs playmakers. Wandell was really, really good for them last year before tearing the ACL. So I, I think he'll slide right back into that role where he's getting six, seven, eight targets a game and catching most of them because they're very, very low A dot type targets uh Kendrick Bourne we've seen this before every time he has a big week he shoots up the waiver wire list I'm not too concerned about it Curtis Samuel is playing some ball man he is playing some ball this dude is getting carries this dude is getting targets this dude is way fucking outperforming Jahan Dotson but he's 51% owned so there's nothing new there let's talk tight ends though let's talk tight ends I think one of the waiver wire pickups of the week's got to be Michael Mayer out there in Las Vegas. As you can see, his snaps have increased every single week since week two. 40%, 47%, 51%, 66%, 66%, up to 81%. And with those increase in snaps, we're seeing a major increase in production as well. Devontae Adams being a little bit banged up probably plays a role here. But look at the next few games. You got Chicago. Detroit's obviously tough, but you got the Giants. Jets are tough. Miami, KC, by Minnesota, Chargers, KC. Like, this schedule is beautiful. So Michael Mayer is a dude who can absolutely emerge over the second half of the year as a top 10 uh, tight end. He was a dude that a lot of people liked coming out of Notre Dame. He was a monster pass catcher in terms of production coming out of college. Uh, a lot of people had him penciled in as the tight end one in this class earlier on in the spring, and then Dalton Kincaid happened, and a lot of other players ended up emerging. But Michael Mayer was a dude not to be forgotten about, and he is starting to emerge right now for the Raiders. He's overtaking Austin Hooper, and it's something absolutely to keep an eye on. So Michael Mayer would be probably one of my like top three pickers. If you again, if you don't need like a bye week filling at the running back position, it's dudes like Rashi Rice, it's dudes like JSN if they're available. It's definitely a dude like Michael Mayer if you're in a tight end premium or a full PPR type league. Mayer's a dude that if you're hurting at tight end, which fucking who isn't. Eight to ten percent is without a doubt warranted for him. Jonas Smith keeps fucking eating too. These are tight end premium numbers, so these are a little bit inflated. But regardless, like if he's getting six, seven, like his lowest target number of the year besides week one is five last week, and he ended up scoring a touchdown here. So he's just as involved in that offense as Kyle Pitts is. And again, it's not fluky. Like it's five straight weeks in a row. Arthur Smith loves Jonu Smith, so Jonu Smith would be another guy that I'd be looking for on the waiver wire. We'll talk QB right quick because I think we've got some good options. Sam Howell uh, playing against the Giants is definitely my number one waiver wire pickup for the quarterback position. The rest of these guys, why are they even on the trending? Like they're 80% owned, 60% owned, 66% owned, grow up. But a couple guys we probably need to talk about. Tyson Badgett of Chicago plays the Raiders. Now he is taking over for Justin Fields, who has dislocated his throwing hand thumb. Now I've heard from Chicago fans. I've heard from Chicago fans that this guy could spin the ball. 
I'm going to be honest with you. I'm usually not averse to doing the work for you, but there just ain't no fucking way I'm going back to watching Tyson Badgett tape. They're not even going to have tape from him. You know where this dude went to college? He went to college at Shepard. Is it Shepard or Shepherd? I don't know. I don't care. I'm not watching the tape. Speculative ad. Fuck it. Why not? In Superflex Leagues, throw 3 to 5% and, and see what happens there. Maybe he's an athlete. Maybe he's not. I don't know. I don't care. You guys can do the research on that. Malik Willis is another, obviously, interesting pickup in Superflex formats. We got Ryan Tannehill getting carted off. Now, Malik Willis, I, I think it's pretty clear that he's, he's probably not it. Not a great thrower of the football. He can run a little bit, but he holds on to the football so much, and he starts to get run heavy, and he starts to get happy feet, and he gets sacked all the time. Atlanta's a pretty tough matchup against QBs when it comes to getting sacked. Uh, we got a very high pressure rate. All those things are not adding up well for Malik Willis. He'll probably have some good games, though, just because his floor is high with the rushing total, but he'll turn the ball over a lot. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Will Levis ends up. I know they have shown absolutely no affinity to having him on the field yet, but if Malik Willis struggles, if Malik Willis goes out over the next couple of weeks and has a three interception game, there's a good chance they turn to uh, Will Levis at some point and they see what that kid has. But he's an athlete. He's got a big arm. So maybe there's something there. So I would, you know, if I'm really, really desperate at the QB position for Malik Willis, I think you could throw somewhere from like 8 to 10% in super flex leagues. And then, you know, 0 to 1%, 0 to 2% on Will Levis and kind of just see how that plays out. And if nothing happens over the next three weeks, he's obviously droppable after that. And you have Brian Hoyer, who's the next starting quarterback up uh, Garoppolo. Let's see what it says here. Garoppolo went down awkwardly after a pass attempt late in the second quarter, whatever, whatever, whatever. I actually think uh, what I heard for Garoppolo is that it's possible that he could play this upcoming week. So I don't know how much time he's going to miss despite him going to the hospital. Um, if he misses time, I mean, Brian Hoyer, Loki, the Raiders have a really, really nice offensive setup there between Jacoby Myers and Devontae Adams and Michael Mayer and Josh Jacobs, and they play the Chicago Bears, who are going to be terrible. They have this man playing QB for them, so the field position for the Raiders should be great, which means Brian Hoyer should could get, could have a nice little floor game for you, maybe 200 and, and two touchdowns or something like that. I'd imagine Josh Jacobs is going to get 48 uh, touches in that game with Brian Hoyer under center, if that's the case there. But uh, I actually weirdly think you could probably do worse than Brian Hoyer. In in the year of 2023, in the year of our Lord, somehow that statement just came out of my mouth hole. A lot of statements just came out of my mouth hole. And if you liked it, if you appreciated them, I would appreciate you hitting the button that looks like this down below and subscribing to the channel. We'll move our way over to the trending down list and tell you who I think we can drop. I don't see a lot of names that I would... We'll, 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 we'll do it this way. Guys that I would hold on to for right now. Logan Thomas, I would hold on to. Quentin Johnson, I still would hold on to. I get it. He had an absolute dud last night on Monday Night Football, but they still have not. Somehow, after the bye week, he had fewer snaps. He went from 51% against Las Vegas down to 48% against Dallas. Dallas is obviously a tough defensive matchup. They've got KC. They've got Chicago. I, I, would, I would give Quentin Johnson at least one, probably two more weeks on my bench before I get rid of him and drop him. Deontay Foreman... I think is relatively droppable. Roshan coming back this week. It could still be a split backfield, but it was already two split based on the fact that those guys were gone. So he is droppable. Guys that I'm for sure holding on to. Jaleel McLaughlin, I'm definitely holding on to. Tajay Spears, I don't care that he's on a bye. You got to hold on to his ass. Tank Dell, it's insane that he's on here. Josh Reynolds should not be dropped. I think Marvin Mims is the dude you should hold on to until the trade deadline in the NFL, which is, I think, about two weeks from now. He's a dude that if Jerry Judy and or Cortland Sun get moved, obviously his play time is going to take a big bump up. So hold on to him. I think you could probably do worse than Justice Hill, too. I feel like he gets enough good opportunity. He never like turns it into anything, but I think you hold on to Justice Hill. I think you should definitely hold on to KJ Osborne. I don't know why he's being perpetually dropped. Salvin Ahmed should be owned. I think Jeff Wilson should be owned. I think Gus Edwards should probably still be owned as well. We're never going to be able to predict when those goal line carries are coming, so might be more useless than useful for you, but it is what it is. Sky Moore can probably be dropped. Michael Wilson. Uh, Michael Wilson, I'm still holding on. I still think second half could be good. I still love him like I love my mother, all right? And like I love you guys, and like I would love y'all to go over to bdge.co and check out the waiver wire rankings, check out our weekly rankings, and join the Q&A Assault, which will be this up coming Saturday, all right? That's all I got for you. Become a Big Dog member. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be back tomorrow morning with our trade target video. Mwah.